Hello everyone, it's Mr. VR here. Today we're excited to introduce the Xreal Bean Pro, a new AR glasses only device from Xreal. I had the opportunity to experience the actual device the other day, so I'll be sharing my hands-on impressions with you. The Bean Pro looks similar to a smartphone and comes with a dedicated operating system called Nebula OS, making it a device specifically designed for Xreal's AR glasses. It has two cameras mounted on the front that enable the capture of 3D spatial video. At the time of its announcement, this feature was highlighted as a key selling point. But to be honest, I wasn't particularly interested in it. However, when I actually tried the device, I discovered several other aspects that exceeded my expectations. I hope to share these insights with you in today's video. First, let's take a look at the hands-on experience, and then I'll provide a more detailed explanation. Please watch and enjoy. Once again, this is the Beam Pro. First, let's look at this part here. It has a 3D camera, a binocular camera. The distance between the lenses is 50mm this time. This lens separation is closer to human eyes, which is one of the attractive features implemented this time. This is basically the Beam Pro's screen. It runs on an Android base with our company's Reveal OS layered on top of it. It's designed so that Android apps can be freely controlled in a spatial environment. Let's quickly move on to 3D shooting. This here is the camera widget. When you tap this, the camera starts up normally like this. At the bottom, you can see options for spatial video and spatial photo. You can choose between these modes. This time, we'll go with spatial video. A message will appear asking you to turn the Beam Pro sideways, so let's do that. Now we're ready to start shooting. Is it okay if I press this now? It would be great if you could hold up that 3D object over there. This part works just like shooting a normal video on an iPhone. As for photos, we've managed to take a shot. As a side note, the video we just took will be displayed on the Beam Pro in a side-by-side -side format. So if you actually connect the XLR glasses, this becomes a specification that looks three-dimensional. Let's go ahead and connect the Beam Pro to the XLR glasses. The basic construction is the same as the conventional beam. The left is the input for charging the Beam Pro main unit and the right is the output to the glasses. So this time we'll connect it to the right glass. So you can charge it even while it's connected as you mentioned. Since we're connecting to XLR this time, please take the Beam Pro in your hand. You can probably see that there are many Android apps lined up in that space right now, but the Beam Pro you're holding now is acting as a laser pointer. So you can actually operate the Beam Pro to select and open the app you like. It's almost the same functionality as the previous Android version of Nebula, right? So, this screen is specifically for the Beam Pro. Oh, that's right, it feels like the Nebula OS installed on the Beam Pro is being displayed on the glasses now. It's like the home screen of the Vision Pro. If I remember correctly, I think there was a photo app somewhere on the first page. If you select that, can you freely change the window size and position? As for simply, if you press at the top of the window there, you can switch the size for now. Got it. It moves properly and stays in the space even when I move. Another highlight is the apps on this Nebula OS, right? You can open two at the same time. For example, on the left in the space could be Google Chrome and on the right a spreadsheet. This allows for use cases like multitasking. 
It's like opening a clone and selecting an app in home, then placing another one side by side. You can actually swap or exchange those two apps. Basically, it's now fully compatible with the Play Store for apps that can be downloaded from the Play Store. They can now all be opened in the spatial environment. However, in terms of functionality, it feels a bit like an emulator. You use a pointer to operate the screen instead of your finger. That's how the UI works. Currently, uh, it's limited to two apps at a time. Yes, that's right. Currently up to two. You can see apps like Line and Netflix. You can have up to two open. So you can actually use Line on the left while watching Netflix on the right. On a normal Android device with Nebula, you don't have apps like Lane Raider. No, you don't. This is a specialized feature with the Play Store being fully compatible. The ability to use external third-party apps in the spatial environment is a major advancement this time. Our main challenge has been there hasn't been much AR content available until now. I think this kind of technology is content driven. The recent release of Beam Pro is also, if we could make Android apps 3D and spatial, it might help compensate for the lack of content in some areas. That's the idea behind this UI design. I thought its strength was being able to take and view spatial photos and videos. But that's not the only thing, right? Is this home screen not available on regular smartphones with Nebula? No, it's not available. In the end, although the Nebula app is distributed on the Play Store, Nebula itself is not authenticated by Google. So you can't integrate third-party apps without the authentication called EMS, which stands for Google Mobile Services. Without EMS, which is Google Mobile Services Authentication, you can't freely integrate apps. So we finally acquired those rights, and now we are able to make this happen. The app isn't 6D off, is it? That's right, the app itself is not 6D off. But the spatial photos become 6D off, right? Yes, if it's ultra, it becomes 6D off. Display apps can do 6D off but third-party apps are not compatible with 6D OF. Is it the same with this Nebula-specific player? Yes, I think the player probably supports 6D OF as well, but I believe you were able to point the Beam Pro and select from the menu earlier. This isn't confirmed information yet, but in the future, if you connect the Beam Pro using the Air 2 Ultra, you may be able to manipulate the spatial photo icons with your hands which is where things are headed. That's great. That's quite ideal. Being able to operate it while it's in your pocket, that would be the most ideal scenario. That's the ideal vision at this point. We are currently making adjustments for that. That was my experience. In terms of my impressions, the Bean Pro exceeded my expectations and performed very well. Key highlights include the ability to use Xreal's AR glasses while charging, the ease of capturing spatial videos in 3D, the MR mode that allows opening multiple browsers and enjoying 3D content, and most importantly, the ability to use all Android apps in a spatial environment. Until now, I had been connecting my MR-enabled smartphone to use Xreal. I thought using the Bean Pro wouldn't make a big difference, but this experience changed my mind. In fact, even with MSR-enabled smartphones, it wasn't possible to project individual apps like Line or Netflix into the space until now. The Bean Pro is the first to enable projecting general Android apps into a spatial environment. This is a significant advantage, and I feel it's only with the Bean Pro that Xreal's true capabilities can be unleashed. The price point of around 30,000 yen is also relatively affordable. I think it will be an especially attractive option for those using Xreal on non-MR smartphones, as well as for existing Xreal Bean users. However, currently the Bean Pro is used as a pointer to control apps in the space, and precise or rapid operations are a bit challenging. Text input ultimately relies on the on-screen keyboard of the Bean Pro, 
There is a slight lag in operation while browsing but there seems to be room for improvement. I think the main usage will be checking SNS while watching video content and ebooks. However, the Quest 3 and Vision Pro have the same challenges. The Bean Pro can be used as a smartphone, but it doesn't support SIM cards and doesn't have a calling function, so it's a little unsatisfactory to use as a main device. It would be more realistic to use it as a dedicated x real terminal. To be honest, spatial video wasn't as impressive as I expected. Watching spatial video on a Quest 3 or Vision Pro is clearly inferior in terms of realism and three-dimensionality. I also felt that the camera image quality of the Bean Pro was a bit lacking. The field of view is also narrow. So if you move your face slightly or enlarge the spatial video in front of your eyes, the image gets cut off. However, I think this will vary depending on the shooting environment and what is being filmed. So if it's a person shooting that is well suited for spatial video, it might be a little better. That being said, overall I felt that the Bean Pro is designed to maximize the capabilities of Xreal. The Bean Pro is currently available for pre-order on the official website, with shipments starting sequentially from August 6th. In the future, if this Bean Pro becomes even more compact and integrates with glasses, it will become even more convenient. Furthermore, if the X Real Air Ultra's hand tracking controls are added, the day when smartphones are completely replaced may be near. We will continue to share this kind of information in the future, so please subscribe to our channel. With that, thank you for watching until the end. See you in the next video.